Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Lone Wolf Challenge. In the last episode, our tribe came one step closer to reclaiming their old homelands. The very same place where Anna grew up, the very same place where she met Canvas, so this holds a lot of sentimental value to her, but it was unfortunately overrun by Berginas, so our tribe has been trying to take it back for her ever since. Luckily, we do have one very strong warrior in our midst, one who has even been blessed by Anamim herself. And I think after taking down one of those Berginas, he is feeling mighty confident. He might even be a little bit overconfident, and I can see him charging into this final battle very recklessly. Maybe we'll even have Odin guide him toward the Berghina. If we bring him over here, and if we ignore the bunnies, it looks like they're going to get a little bit more paint for Takir. We should be able to bring Hera all the way up to the Berghina itself, and maybe land a couple of attacks. I feel like he would probably use both of his attacks. Ah, and he doesn't even have to worry. The Sparina only has three days remaining on its lifespan. You could actually take it out in one hit, and you would still have enough energy to take out the Guardian Mole too. Ooh, I wonder how our gods and our goddesses are going to feel about that. Taking out the Guardian Mole right next to the healing fruit. You are definitely getting a little bit big-headed here, and that overconfidence might just be your undoing. But for now, Anna is quite pleased. She has her old home back. She could even seek out her old permanent nest as well. And it looks like in the midst of all that, did we actually pick up a leech? Oh no, of course it would be you, Tavon. Of course, poor little Tavon, who is so often distracted by his fish in the water. Well, I think Anna Ressi is probably very accustomed to this. We could have her dive into the water in front of you, and maybe pick that leech off of you. These two probably feel a bit of a connection anyways. They both are very much connected to the oceans. Anna Ressi with her water body, and Tavon with his fishing tail. So she probably likes them quite a bit. Unfortunately, they do share immunity genes, so I don't think we'd be able to breed them. Or at the very least, if we did, we would risk getting our babies sick. If worse comes to worse, that might be our only option. Right now, we don't have very many healthy pairings, so all we can really hope is that our creatures are going to find some wanderers out in the darkness today. We're even going to be charging into some uncharted territory later, and I'm sure that stretch of darkness offers quite a bit of potential for new faces. Now, instead of picking up the meat right away, I think Anna is actually going to grab up some of these berries, because I would like her to paint some celebratory markings on Little Hair. Maybe she could even paint his ram horns, just as a way to show that he is the hero of their tribe. They're probably not doing a very good job keeping his ego under control. It kind of seems like Anna is just fanning the flames at this point, but I guess you can't really blame her. This place means so much to her, and it means even more that she was able to see it again before she passed. So instead, let's have Fawn come over here to take up the role of tidying up this place. And oh my goodness, all these little bunnies. Unfortunately, nobody else is quite strong enough to take them down in one swipe, so that's why I haven't been using their turns. It would probably be more beneficial for Fawn to pick up the Baryena meat, scare away the other moles. It's actually kind of good to see that we have more than one mole here. The guardian moles are watching you now, Hare. Well, they are not at all pleased. I wonder what sort of deity they would be attached to. We have a new gene as well, but I'm sure it's nothing that we'll be able to use. We'll just check it out so we know which one it is. I think it's probably the Nimble Fingers. That must be from when Anna picked up the berries a couple of turns back. So I guess we could potentially have a challenge for Vankir next, or maybe even for the Balance Sisters if we unlock the claw too. Now go ahead and pick up this meat for us. We'll have Fawn clear out the grasses, and we'll have Odin do the same. It'll be much easier for Hare to go hunting the bunnies after all, if he has lots of space to run around. So now that the leech has been taken off of you, Tavon, I'm sure you're eager to go searching for your fish again. Let's actually bring him over this way. Oh, that's right. We had the remains of the crabbit over here too. Well, I'm sure you wouldn't mind picking that up for Anna Ressi, especially because she helped you. Now, if only one of you had the nimble fingers, you'd be able to pick up these shells. It probably wouldn't even be worth trying to waste our turns with that. 
We'll just bring Tavon over here instead. Oh, we actually have a tree stump here. What a strange spot for a tree stump, right in the middle of the island. You know, that might be a great way for us to call some potential wanderers to our side, though. That would be a pretty good way for us to get a new mate for some of our creatures who really need to find a good partner. Now I guess, Kimmy Lynn, we can just have you pick up the berries for now. You guys are going to need some good paints too, after all. We'll bring you right over here to pick up the paints from the shriveled up berry bushes too, but you're going to have to steer clear of those cactus plants. And I'm sure your big sister would tell you as much. They don't know it from experience, but it seems to be the kind of thing that our creatures just instinctively know. Do not go messing with the cactus. So let's have you guys sniff around as you go deeper. We should probably consider clearing out a pathway behind us too. And there are so many roots over here as well. Yeah, you're going to want to make sure that you have a path for your mother to get up here, because she is going to be able to get us plenty of food if she comes to this place. I guess that means she's going to be leaving Tavon behind. I think I will have him set up here to search for a mate. He's one of our few creatures with the perfect eyesight, and with his very unique genes too, he should be able to give us a pretty good family. So we'll zoom in on our hero hair as we skip the day, just to make sure that the Baraginas are going to stay away. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they come seeking their revenge, now that we've slain three Baraginas. But it looks like all is safe right now. And no wanderers out here for you guys? Nope, everything is nice and quiet, so we'll just go on business as usual here. Anna can show Fawn all the best ways to paint all of those special markings, as here goes ahead and catches another lunch for the wise old elder, which I'm sure would earn him another pat on the head from Anna. So go ahead and pick up those berries too, and we'll have you start clearing out the grasses. Oh, not again, Tavon. Tell me that wasn't you. Oh, you are a little leech magnet. Anna Ressi is going to be too afraid to leave your side at this rate. Well, why don't you go ahead and scoot on into the island itself? Yes, and now you can see so many fish. Fish and crabbits. Oh, you are going to be just fine here. All right, Anna Ressi. Let's bring you over to your children to make sure that they're doing okay. We'll have you set up right here. And then maybe Kimmy Lynn could even guide you toward the roots, since I'm sure her sister showed her where they are. Now why don't you let out your very first howls, Tavon? We'll see if this will attract any brand new wanderers to your side. Unfortunately not, but it does seem like it brought the leeches. Well, they can't reach you anymore. You can laugh from high atop your throne as they circle your little island, though it's going to take one very brave individual to come all the way out here with you. I hope maybe we can find some more tree stumps in the grasslands. I think they usually spawn on these green tiles. Anywhere where an oak tree could grow, I guess. So we'll have to see if maybe Odin can find one too. Let's actually have him try to expand the territory. Which way do you think would be the best way to go? I think that permanent nest we found, or Lisa Dodomingo, was way up here somewhere. So maybe we should bring him this way. Yeah, this was where we figured Anna was probably born, and the Dodomingos love this place too, if I remember correctly. Maybe Anna will even pass this area down to Odin, so he could use it as his future home. We'll have him come on over here to clear out the grasses, and you can search around for some little stump to call out on in the next turn. It would be pretty lucky if we do run into one right around this area. Now with Fawn learning all of the tools of the trade from our mother, I wonder if she's finally going to realize that Kaz isn't too interested in fighting. He would really prefer to pick up the berries too, and he might actually be a pretty good painter as well. So maybe after we have him pick up some of those coconuts, we'll bring him toward the berry bushes. Oh, the poisoned berry bushes. I almost forgot about these. I guess those would be useful for different colors for Takir's paintings but it would also be pretty dangerous to use. Do you think Takir would appreciate those death-defying paintings? I guess we could always have our creatures use the healing fruits right after. That way they wouldn't take too much damage from their artistic endeavors, but they could still offer Takir something very, very unique. Maybe that could even be Kaz's claim to fame. 
Well, Fawn, you're going to have quite a bit of work ahead of you then. I'm sure she's not going to approve after all. She does like that Kaz is showing interest in the tribe's ways, but naturally she wants to see him safe first. Now I think all that should be left is our wild mushroom and aqualoo, so let's have you guys go a little bit deeper into the grasses. We'll bring you over here toward the grasslands, that way if there are more of those little stumps that we can call from, we'll find those first. So jump on in aqualoo, maybe we should actually sniff around as we're going, just in case anything nefarious pops up as we're wandering deeper into the grasses. The amount of roots out here is truly unbelievable. I think we're going to have to get some more creatures with the ticking paws soon, hopefully before Anna Russi passes. So once again, let's go ahead and skip the day. This time, let's keep an eye over here on our wild mushroom. Since they have so much darkness surrounding them, I am a little bit worried that they could run into something bad. But it seems like, once again, all is pretty quiet. No wanderers, I'm afraid. I'm still hoping that we're going to see one of those yellow silhouettes, but it looks like you guys only have the molds to keep you company right now. So go ahead and pick up this little patch of grass for us. It looks like that one's actually going to regrow, so it might not be the best way for you two to keep your pathways under Jack. Well, Adrian, you don't seem like the type to worry about it very much. You just prefer the adventure. So maybe she would even stray a little bit from Aqualoo's side and go charging deeper into the grasses too. We'll bring her up here and then sniff around again, because now we're getting closer to some little pond. So it might actually be a good place for them to find a base. Maybe that's where somebody has set up their family. Now, Anna Russi, it is time for you to come on up here and finally start digging up these roots. We could desperately use the food anyways. Oh, and Kimmy Lynn has her third gem. Maybe it's time for you to graduate away from the shriveled up berries then. Do we have any fuller berry bushes that you could pick from? I know, unfortunately, we're still in the midst of a drought, but at least that would offer you a little bit more food to eat. So despite the threat of leeches, let's have her come down here so she can grab up those. And now, Tavon, let's try it again. Maybe second time's gonna be the charm? Nope, it looks like you're still stuck all alone on this island. Maybe he needs to think about appeasing Takir before he calls out next time. He could gather up some of these berries, in fact, and he could use them to paint the stump. Maybe that would be a good way to catch Takir's eye and get him to send a partner to our tribe. It's kind of fitting that the bunnies have all stolen the normal berries next to Kaz too, so this is kind of like his last resort. I guess we'll have his brother Hare jump on down here and swipe up the bunny for him. He is just lunging from side to side, back and forth across the entire territory. He must think that he is unstoppable these days. And Kaz, meanwhile, will just quietly roll his eyes from the safety of the grasses and turn his attentions to the poison berry bush. So Kaz, it seems, is quite the curious creature, if nothing else. He's sure that despite the bitter look of these berries, he could probably turn those into paints too. So let's have him grab up as many as he can carry. And despite the rather sick feeling that he gets from them, they'll create a paint like no other. Let's bring Fawn over to her sons. Curious as ever, of course. Oh, and there's a little rock over here too. Maybe we could even say that Kaz is using the rock to present his paintings. That was actually how Takir did most of his artwork when he was still alive, so it'd be an even better way for them to share the creativity with him. Fawn is going to be furious, though. She's going to see right away that Kaz is not acting like his normal self, and she's probably going to try to ban him from using these berry bushes. But Kaz has had enough of blindly following his mother's ways. He didn't appreciate her forcing him into the battle, so I'm sure he would only assume that she's trying to stifle his creativity right now. Now, Odin, why don't you go ahead and scoot on out of the nest? This is going to be Anna's final day anyways, so I would like her to settle down inside that permanent nest for us. It's kind of fitting, too, that we even have a rock right next to this nest. This would make a pretty good nursery, and a great way for all of our nimble-fingered babies to practice using their paints. Let's have Odin go ahead and clear out a pathway to the north. He'll probably tell his mother that he's off to seek out Takir's blessing. 
just like both of his parents did when they were very, very young. So Anna is leaving this island very confident that her family will flourish and that they'll continue to honor Takira's ways. Let's zoom out as we skip the day of this time with two of our wanderers consumed by darkness. There's no telling which one of them is going to run into danger first. And ironically, it's one of our homebodies that seems to be having the most trouble after he took a little bit of damage from those poisoned berries. I feel like Fawn would probably usher him straight over to the healing fruit, though technically he doesn't need the healing just yet. And aside from that, Hare is already going to take up that space when he goes a lunging after that guardian mole once more. Do I hear bunnies stealing our berries from every corner of the island too? It must be you, little guy. Yeah, looks like you had some shriveled up berries to gather paints from. And we don't have any wanderers still. Nope, all is quiet out in the grasses, so this might be a good opportunity for Tavon to go ahead and gather up those berries. There really aren't too many here for you to work with, just two measly berries thanks to this drought. So hopefully that's going to be enough to appease to cure. Maybe you should even consider grabbing up the grasses here. You could offer those up too as the paintbrushes just like our previous family. So go ahead and let out your one lonely song. Still nobody I'm afraid, but with only one call I'm not surprised. Now Kimmy Lynn, let's bring you over here so you can grab up your berries too. Once again, still just two. Man, Vancare is really, really displeased with us. It must be because we're wasting so much of his food. He is pretty furious with us. Oh, has one of Takira's little delivery bunnies come over here to comfort you, Odin? That's awfully sweet. Well, we're going to leave that bunny to roam then, because it's not as if you could swipe it up in one hit anyways. Ah, uh, no wonder it was just passing through to grab some more berries, and then it happened to notice you so sad. It's even over here, mourning the loss of Anna. She must have actually meant quite a bit to Takir. I guess our theory of Takir liking the blank canvas look of our creatures was actually right. It offers him up more creative freedom to do what he pleases. Ah, uh, look at this. Odin actually found another permanent nest. Suspiciously close to the swamplands, so we will have to be careful. And it looks like there might be a normal berry bush here too, surrounded by these roots, of course. So I hope this means you're going to run into somebody special, Odin. Usually we do have some pretty good luck finding wanderers near the nests. Now let's have Fawn march her way over to the healing fruit, clearing out the grasses as the bunnies skitter around her, but she's paying them no attention. Kaz, though, he is a bit more cautious. He wants to use these berries for his own paintings, not let them get picked off by Takira's bunnies. And of course, the same goes for the poison berries too. The poison berries are immune to the bunny's thieving paws, and I'm sure that's something that Kaz is going to notice quite quickly too. Now let's have you catch up with your friend, Aqualoo, because Adrian has gotten rather far away, and it looks like she may have made friends with these bunnies. Well, at least you guys have found something out here. It's not exactly the wanderers that we were hoping for, but you guys could probably use a little bit of food to munch on anyways. You've been wandering for a long, long time. That food could even be packed away to use to invite somebody new to the tribe. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed as we pass the day once again. Maybe we should go back here with Odin, since he does have the permanent nest in his area. I wonder if maybe he's going to find somebody today? It's so quiet on the island aside from Kaz, of course. Poor, poor Kaz. He's lost four days worth of his lifespan now, so one more day and I think we'll get the most use out of the healing fruit. But go ahead and sniff around for us, Odin. Still quiet. Still nobody out here for you to meet. Oh, that is so sad. Oh, but wait a second. Ah, uh, another derp snout creature. What a surprise. And it looks like she might actually be in the ocean, too. So, Anna Resi, this might actually be your calling. Maybe you should scoot on down here? Try to catch up to her, at least. That way we can see who she is. Oh, don't drown yourself! Ramiko! I know I wasn't impressed with the derps now, but that doesn't mean you have to dive head first into the waves. She looks like a little bubblegum princess, doesn't she? Oh, she is so cute. 
and she does actually have the gills and the water body in her inactive traits. So I wonder if she's from some distant branch of Anaresi's family? Maybe she's trying to return to the sea? Maybe she was banished because she doesn't actually have those genes. But somebody's gonna have to swoop in and save you. Oh no, Tafan has a similar immunity gene with her too. They both have immunity gene A. Oh, we are going to have to start risking some sick babies, aren't we? Unless maybe we could bring Ramiko all the way over to Odin? Uh, they could have some healthy babies together. How was her eyesight? Oh, pretty bad. Well, at least if she had a baby with Odin then, I'm pretty sure they would be guaranteed to have good eyesight. They would be carrying the short-sighted eyes, but the normal eyes tends to overpower the short-sightedness. So this might still be a good opportunity. Well, instead of moving to Vaughn, let's actually bring Kimmy Lynn down here so she can offer up poor, poor Ramiko some food. And then let's drag you out of the ocean too. I guess if we move her right here... Oh, thank goodness, she didn't even take any damage. Oh, she is so cute. Look at her bubblegum pink fur. And the blue eyes are gorgeous with that color too. Princess Bubblegum has arrived. Now we just need to bring her to her true kingdom. So since she was so interested in the water anyways, maybe we'll have her follow the waves. If she follows them all the way to the tide pools and washes up on these shores, that would give her a pretty good reason to run into this family. So we'll have Kimmy Lynn skip her way over here. And then Ramiko should be able to start stumbling her way through the darkness. Though without somebody to guide her path, it is going to take her a really, really long time. Unfortunately, Tavon is just far too distracted, picking up his berries, singing to the sky. I don't know if this is going to find him the mate that he was hoping for. He only has four days remaining. He might actually be better off going with Ramiko. Then at least he wouldn't be isolated on his lonely island. Oh, hair, are you sleeping on the job? We have a little bunny that is just about to steal your brother's berries. Oh no, Kaz is going to be so disappointed. And hair doesn't have enough energy to swipe up this one either, but he would still go charging after, I'm sure. Oh, Kaz is probably just shaking this head. Isn't this all you're good for, brother? Catching these bunnies, defending us from Berigina's, and you can't even get that right anymore? You must be losing your touch. And for somebody with such a big ego, that has got to be the worst kind of insult. So I wonder if Hare is going to try to carve his way through the darkness too. Maybe he'll try to find some more Berigina's to conquer, especially if it'll prove his little brother wrong. And Fawn, meanwhile, is probably so fed up with her children's antics. We'll have her keep clearing out these grasses, and then pretty soon she'll have to come on back here to mourn her mother as well. I'm sure by picking up the berries right next to her old childhood nest, that would be a good way to honor her memory. And now that we have a potential mate for you, Odin, we probably don't want you to get too far away. We'll just have you pick up the grasses right next to this permanent nest, and then maybe grab up a couple of berries? It'll take a while for Ramiko to get over here anyways, so you might as well make sure that you have plenty of food for your future family. Now I think, once again, all we should be down to is our two wanderers who have gotten so far away from their chosen path. So if you guys have to run, you might be in a little bit of trouble. Ooh, you finally found a nest though! Maybe this is the place where somebody has settled down? Let's have you come over here to pick up this meat right next to one of our guardian moles. Overlooking the pond, in fact. I wonder if this is a bit more of a sacred area after all. Well, you'll have to keep your eyes open. Maybe tomorrow will finally be the day that you find somebody to travel with you. But let's go ahead and skip the day again. Still, no new babies born on this turn, but our luck is about to turn around. Now with great reluctance. We'll finally have Kaz stumble his way over to the healing fruit. He'll gobble up this so his mother will stop bugging him, of course. He's still poisoned, but at least that has taken care of quite a bit of the damage. Healing fruits heal five days worth of damage, so it's not everything. But as soon as that grows back, we should be able to heal him entirely. As long as he stays away from those precious rare paints, at least. So, Tavon, you're probably starting to feel a little bit defeated, aren't you? 
Let's bring you on down here. That way you'll be able to help. Oh no. You'll be able to help Ramiko? Oh, you got in too deep, and it must have been because of those fish. Always distracting you. We'll come on up to the shore at Anna Ressi's demand, and maybe we'll see if she can chase the fish a little bit closer to you. You're really starting to worry her with all of your antics. I don't think she could bear to see you pass early. In fact, I'm kind of starting to wonder if these two would start a family together. I know there is still that potential for sick babies, but their bond has deepened, and with their similar water genes, it seems to fit their story. It's even more fitting, too, because if this was the exact place where Anna Ressi's previous babies were born. She actually made her own nest right here on the shore, so I wonder if we could even bring her to the very same tile. Let's have Ramiko scoot her way ahead. Maybe she could even settle down right here to pick up some of the berries. It'll give her the chance to relax. And it might even give Kimmy Lin the chance to show her how to paint some special markings on her fur. I'm sure that's something that our little bubblegum princess has never ever seen before. Maybe that's even what attracted her here in the first place? Seeing all of those intricate patterns painted all over their spots. And since it hasn't rained in ages, it's been stuck to their fur for a while. Maybe she doesn't even realize that all of these paintings aren't permanent, but as soon as Van Keer finally blesses us with the rains, it is all going to change. So Hare, which way should we send you off in? There is actually another mole right here, so maybe he would just follow the trail of moles and bunnies. Anything that he can actually attack to help prove his own strength. We will first need to move one of our other creatures though, because the mole is kind of staring you down. So let's bring Fawn over to her mother's old nest, and that should give Hare the time to jump in here and snag that little mole from behind. Ah, and it looks like you have your next path to take too. The bunnies are leading you over to the dark side of the island, toward the other side of the swamp in fact. That's gotta be a pretty dangerous place for anybody, so Hare might be getting himself into a little bit more trouble than he can handle. But I'm sure Kaz isn't worried one bit. Let's bring him down here to the tide pools. We'll see if he can pick up some more coconuts and berries, and anything else that he could use in his unique paintings. He probably wants to find even more than just the poison berries, in fact. Now, Aqualu, let's sniff around again. There's plenty of moles here, plenty of roots, plenty of berries, but still nobody for you guys to enjoy the scenery with. At this point, you two are so far away from your families, it would probably be better off just setting up camp here. And with those final berries in Odin's pocket, let's have him return to Fawn's side so these two can pay respects to their mother one final time. So we'll go ahead and skip the day, and then in the next episode, it'll finally be time for our tribe to start crowing once more. This era of peace has certainly settled in, not a danger for miles and miles. And it's time for us to get some new little painted babies in the nest. So we will indeed risk the baby between Tafan and Anna Resim, especially because this is his final day. So it'll be his one chance to pass on his legacy. Why don't we go ahead and set up his mutation menu before we end the episode? I'm pretty sure that Anna Resim is already taken care of. So let's see what little Tavon is going to roll. A 13 and an 11, which is the black pattern and the stripes. I don't think anybody in the tribe even has the stripes in their inactive traits. Okay, never mind Tavon. It looks like you are definitely going to be passing the stripes then. Does anybody else have the stripes? Ramiko has a mask. Kimmy Lin has the stripes too? Well, I guess I was completely wrong then. All of those special patterns are hiding away in our tribe's traits, but we've seen so many spots on our families, sometimes it feels like that's all they have in their genetics at all. So in the next episode, we'll cross our fingers for one healthy aquatic baby, maybe even without the derps now if we're lucky, and we'll introduce our bubblegum princess to our meals by the healing fruit. I wonder if Hare is even going to try to steal her away first. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!